Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane of Teach Talk, where learning is fun and easy. If it's your first time watching our videos, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button so you'll get notified on our next videos. Welcome to Shensha Amazing! Shensha Amazing! Kung saan pag-uusapan natin ang mga science concepts from grade 7 to grade 12, including topics in general science, biology, chemistry, physics, and earth science. At dito, Bida Ang Aghaw! In our Shensha Amazing video for today, we are going to explore all about asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, in a nutshell, occurs when a cell grows and doubles the number of its chromosomes and undergoes a series of changes until it divides into two new daughter cells. It is a way in which organisms reproduce by cell division. Ang tawag sa process ng cell division na ito ay mitosis. Meron tayong different types of asexual reproduction. Pag-uusapan natin ang mga types na ito in this video. We have binary fission, budding, fragmentation, regeneration, spore formation, and vegetative reproduction. Simulan natin sa binary fission. Commonly makikita ito sa bacteria archaea, at mga protozoa. It is simply the division of a parent cell to produce two daughter cells. We have two types of binary fission. We have transverse fission and longitudinal fission. Ano ba ang transverse fission? In this example, we can see a paramecium undergoing transverse fission. In transverse fission, ang isang organism ay nagdi-divide into two equal halves sa transverse plane yung nasa gitna. O sa madaling salita, it divides crosswise. On the other hand, ang longitudinal fission ay nagdi-divide sa organism into two equal halves din pero it occurs on the longitudinal plane o it divides lengthwise. For example, sa picture, makikita natin ang isang yuglina undergoing longitudinal fission. Next, let's have bud. Ang budding ay commonly makikita sa mga unicellular organisms kagaya ng yeast at sa mga simple multicellular organisms kagaya ng hydra. In this picture, we can see a hydra. At sa process ng budding, buds or outgrowth form from the parent cell or body to grow into new individuals. This is the bud or outgrowth. It will grow until a new hydra is formed. The buds may separate from the parent to live as another organism or pwede siyang mag remain sa parent to form a colony. But in this case, the bud separates. Our next type is fragmentation. This reproduction is commonly seen in sponges and flatworms. Sa mga organisms na ito, the parent body breaks or fragments into several pieces, and these pieces or fragments develop into new organisms. In this picture, we can see a flatworm. If this flatworm divides, the upper half with no tail and the lower half with no head will form new organisms. Ang upper half ay magiging bagong flatworm at itong tail ay magiging new na flatworm. Our next type of reproduction is commonly seen in animals. It is regeneration. Sa regeneration, the organism regrows a lost body part. Halimbawa, sa isang starfish. Kapag ang isang leg ng starfish ay makutol, it will grow into another part. For example, in this 
starfish na merong six legs, three are cut. So, these three will grow new legs. Then, we have spore formation. Ang spore formation ay tinatawag din na multiple fission at makikita ito sa mga bread molds, mosses, and ferns. In this picture, makikita natin sa left side na ang rhizopus ay nag-undergo ng spore formation by growing a sporangium which contains the spores which are then scattered o ikinakalat sa environment to form new rhizopus or new bread molds. Sa right side naman, we can see a fern. Yung brown na circles that we can see on the underside of the fern are called sorus. This sorus is actually a cluster of sporangium containing the spores. Sa loob niyan, merong spores. At kapag ang spores na ito ay kumalat, it will form another fern. Ang ating first five types ay commonly observed sa mga animals. Ang ating last type of asexual reproduction ay exclusive naman sa plant. May mga plants tayo which are sexually reproducing kasi merong male and female parts naman ang mga plants. Pero we also have certain plants which are reproducing asexually. It involves a process called vegetative reproduction. We will be introducing a few methods of vegetative reproduction. First, we have stem cuttings. It is the most common method of asexual reproduction in plants. Why is that so? Kasi simple lang siya. When you cut something, for example, you cut a rose and you plant it in moist soil, roots will form sa lower half and new shoots will form from the nodes o sa taas. Our next example is grafting. Grafting is another common method of vegetative propagation. Sa grafting, meron tayong terms na dapat mafamiliarize. First, merong sayon. Ang sayon ay ang branch or bud from a desirable plant o kung ano yung plant na gusto mo which is attached to another stem or root system of a stock plant with other desired characteristics. So sa grafting, you are combining desirable characteristics from different plants. This will result in a single plant which combines the characters of the two plants. Mahalaga ang method na to if we want to improve the quality of economically useful plants. For example, sa picture, we can see grafting of tomatoes. Tomato grafting has become famous because it reduces diseases and it improves tolerance sa mga stress sa environment just like flooding, excessive heat, and excessive saltiness o salinity. May mga plants din tayo which can develop new types through their underground stem. For example, we have potatoes. Potato is a tuber. At ang isang tuber ay may mga mata, yung para mga bilog, which are actually nodes which can grow new plants. Kapag binabayaan mo ang isang potato for a long time, nodes, just like yung nakikita nyo sa picture, will grow until it develops a new plant. Another type of reproduction is through stolons. Ano ba ang stolons? Stolons are slender o maninipis na stems sa mga plants. Ang mga stolons ay gumagapang sa soil and once a stolon touches the moist soil, it will grow new roots and new leaflets for a new plant. For example, sa picture, on the left side, we can see a strawberry. Ang stolons ng strawberry, yung nasa baba, yung horizontal na stem, it will crawl on the ground at kapag healthy at moist ang soil, it will form new roots and a new plant. Lastly, we also have specialized leaves which is used in reproduction. Sa picture na ito, we can see a katakataka leaf na merong plantlets around its border. As you can see, meron siyang maliliit na plants. And when these plantlets fall to the ground, tapos enough ang nutrients ng soil for a new plant to grow, these plantlets will grow into new katakataka plants. The processes that we have discussed are just some of the common types of asexual reproduction. 
and these types actually pose advantages and disadvantages. Ano ba ang advantages nila? First, more offspring is produced in lesser time. And it saves energy for mating. In a sexual reproduction, one organism is enough for a new organism to grow. Compared sa sexual reproduction, na kailangan pa ng partner for mating at kailangan pang inurture ang organism in order for it to grow properly. Sa asexual reproduction, simple lang ang methods of reproducing. Pero meron siyang disadvantages. Dahil same lang ang genetic material ng parents sa offspring, delikado to kapag merong factor na hindi favorable para sa species na yon, the entire species will be wiped out and they will go extinct. Before we have a quiz, let's have a quick recap. In this video, we discussed about the types of asexual reproduction. The reproduction that does not involve gametes or sex cells. The different types are binary fission, budding, fragmentation, regeneration, spore formation or multiple fission, vegetative reproduction, and we also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction. It's good time! To see if you really learned something, I will give you 3 minutes to answer this quiz. After 3 minutes, we will check your answer. up, let's check if your answers are correct. Number 1. The pieces of parent organisms develop into new organisms. Ang keyword natin dito ay ang word na pieces. The correct answer is 
fragmentation. Number two, this process forms outgrowth from the parent body which grows into a new organism. We have another keyword here. It is the word outgrowth. The correct answer for number two is budding. Number three, slender stems from where new shoots arise to become plants. Ano ang tawag sa mga stems na ito? Ang correct answer ay stolons. Number four, this results a single plant which combines the characteristics of the two plants. Ito yung sayon at ang stock. The correct answer is grafting. Last number, number 5. It involves division of one cell into two new daughter cells. The correct answer is fission. That ends our Shensha Amazing episode for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video to your friends so that we can learn together. Bye!